Over the past three winters, or more broadly speaking, November to March, I have documented using trail cameras, long-tailed weasels preying on brumating timber rattlesnakes in their New York hibernacula. The first couple of predations occurred at this den site, one in November of 2022 and a few months later in February. If you are a fan of snakes, such as myself, such footage may be unsettling to watch. However, I think such rarely documented predation is intriguing because it suggests learned behavior. Meaning that some weasels recognize that timber rattlesnakes in their brumation state are too lethargic to adequately defend themselves. Thus, it is no surprise that during timber rattlesnake ingress and spring emergence, long-tailed weasels are absent at hibernacular because roles are reversed and the small mammals realize they could become easy prey for an active adult rattlesnake. Okay, so at the first hibernaculum, the latest documented predation occurred in December 2024, and it involved a white weasel preying on a young rattlesnake. Interestingly, the muscle drags the snake from one opening of the hibernaculum down into another, but as it turns out, this white weasel, along with a brown one, appear to have taken up temporary residence inside the den structure. It should be noted that at mid-latitudes or areas that experience intermediate snowfall, not all long-tailed weasels develop a white winter coat. Some remain brown throughout the year. Any changeover is based on genetics. Natural selection favors white winter coats in the long-tailed weasel's northern range and brown winter coats in their southern range. This bobcat, which seems to have picked up on their scent, would eagerly partake in either flavor. Okay, on to another hibernaculum. At this den site, I have been placing a trail camera directly on the ground, a few feet from the den's main entrance. During the winter season of 2022 and 2023, there were no predations captured, despite at least one frequent weasel visitor. In January 2024, however, the camera recorded this predation. Notice how the rattlesnake attempts to crawl through the snow and back into the den, only to be dragged out once more and rendered helpless. This clip ends before the snake is ultimately dragged away. This footage was captured at the end of November 2024, and I'm just going to let it play out first. Okay, so let's rewind that and discuss what the heck just happened. So first, the weasel is attempting to pull a rattlesnake out of the den. You can't really see the snake, but you can hear it rattling. Mr. Raccoon appears, startling the weasel, and as the small muscle lid tries to retreat, it nearly collides with the raccoon, terrifying the weasel. Okay, one more time. Listen for the rattling at the end of the clip after the weasel knocks over the camera. After the weasel pushed the camera downward, Mr. Raccoon knocked it about further, ultimately facing the lens skyward, where the camera eventually became buried under snow. This unfortunately resulted in the camera missing out on any noteworthy footage for two months. I did set the camera back up, but when I checked it four weeks later, it was knocked down and footage once again revealed a raccoon, likely the same culprit, messed with the camera only hours after I had set it up. However, while visiting the site, I spied a young timber rattlesnake just inside the den's entrance. Considering it was a chilly overcast February day, this was completely unexpected. Outwardly, the snake didn't appear to be suffering from any malady, although it did seem a little underweight. At any rate, a bit of a mystery. All right, on to our third timber rattlesnake hibernaculum. At this den site, my trail cameras have not recorded any predation over the last several winters, despite weasels visiting and even disappearing into the den structure on several occasions. However, and this is an interesting observation from this past January, a fisher, a much larger cousin of the weasel, pulls a rattlesnake out from near the den's entrance. But by all accounts, the snake appears already to be dead, likely from illness and or exposure. 
the fisher eventually drags the rattlesnake down slope and out of view of the camera. Incidentally, this may be the same rattlesnake filmed 11 days prior on New Year's Day, despite the cold, wet conditions, suggesting the snake was behaving abnormally due to some malady and it succumbed directly or indirectly by remaining near the surface and exposing the reptile to lethal sub-freezing temperatures. Okay, this is our fourth and final hibernaculum, and another den site where no predation had been recorded, but once again weasels were seen entering the structure. Notable about this den have been the number of other wildlife making cameos. And as we watch this parade of Disney animals, I want to add some final thoughts. I still believe that long-tailed weasel predation on timber rattlesnakes is not systemic, and that the mustelids are attracted to their hibernacular due to the large number of rodents present, especially white-footed mice, their prey of choice. However, at the very least, timber rattlesnake biologists need to appreciate that long-tailed weasel predation inside Hortus hibernacula plays a role in their life history, and such predation needs to be studied in depth as part of an overall conservation plan for this iconic reptile.